Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to be talking about feline upper respiratory infections. This is an incredibly common issue, so we'll cover common symptoms, what you can expect, common treatments, and more. So join me. You'll learn something. It is incredibly common for our cats to deal with upper respiratory infections at some point in their lives. So first, let's cover what the upper respiratory tract is. It's essentially the nose, head, and kind of throat of the airway. When we're talking about lungs, we are talking about lower respiratory. Often, cats can have mild symptoms. It is rare that these symptoms become life-threatening. However, that is also possible. The most common cause for or feline URIs are two viruses, the feline herpes virus and the Khaleesi virus. The incubation period for these two viruses is somewhere between two and 10 days. And these viruses do make up the bulk of the reason for cats to have upper respiratory infections. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't other less common things. Some cats could have fungal infections or Bordetella. Some cats can also have Chlamydophila felis. So let's cover common symptoms that you might see if your cat has a URI. The most common symptoms are things like sneezing, conjunctivitis, ulcers to the eye, ulcers in the mouth. They might also experience coughing, a decrease in appetite, fevers, drooling, ocular discharge, and nasal discharge. Now, as can be said for any virus, these can also develop secondary infections, and those are often bacterial infections. You can see pneumonia develop in these cats and also a chronic rhinitis or chronic inflammation of the nasal turbinates and passageways. It is also possible that they feel so poorly from their upper respiratory infection that the cat may stop eating. When that happens, we do have to worry about other issues like hepatic lipidosis. If they're not eating, they also might not be drinking enough. And so we can also see dehydration in these patients. There are some situations that we have higher risks to the cats. I think about things like catteries or the SPCA, feral cat colonies. We also will see increased risk for young kittens and seniors, as well as any cat that might be immunosuppressed for any reason. So if they're stressed or if they're sick with another disease, if they have FELV or FIV, if they have another infection going on, if they're on medication that affects their immune system, all of those things are risk factors to developing a URI. So the medical workup that's appropriate will depend from patient to patient. So it is sometimes appropriate to swab the upper respiratory tract and send a sample to a lab for a PCR test to figure out exactly what virus or viruses or other infection we are dealing with. And also to look for fungal infections and secondary bacterial infections. Sometimes we also need to do skull x-rays to look for foreign bodies in the nasal passageway or a mass. We might need to do intraoral x-rays to check tooth roots. Issues with a tooth root can affect the nasal passageways. The roots go up so close to where the nasal turbinates are. We also need to check for polyps as some cats will grow little benign masses in their ear canals or in their airways and those can cause symptoms that can look a lot like a URI. Sometimes we need to do chest x-rays to check for pneumonia and we also also will sometimes consider testing the cat for FELV and FIV to rule out issues that might be making the cat have a weaker immune system than is normal. But for the majority of cats, especially if they're young kittens and they're pretty mildly affected, we may just treat them symptomatically and only go into more of an in-depth medical workup if the symptoms aren't resolving or the symptoms are very severe. It's also important that we know a little bit more about the two most common viruses. So the feline herpes virus can survive on objects for around two days and a significant number of the cats that have feline herpes virus do become carriers so they never completely clear the virus and during times of stress they may have a recurrence
recurrence of symptoms. Think about the human cold sore. If people are stressed, they will get a lesion that pops up, but when they're not stressed, then they don't show any symptoms. And it's also important that we know that some cats may shed this virus intermittently. Some cats only shed it when they have other symptoms. Other cats may shed it even if they're asymptomatic. For the feline Khaleesi virus, it is more common that the cat will be able to fully clear the virus after a number of months. However, the Khaleesi virus can stay on objects for up to 10 days. So if you are introducing a new cat to your household, or if you've had a cat that has had upper respiratory infection, you do need to talk to your veterinarian about what is advised in your situation to best clean the environment. Things like bleach are quite effective. However, those can be irritating to cats and their respiratory systems. So you need to discuss this with your veterinarian and figure out what's best for your individual situation. Now treatment for feline upper respiratory infections is mostly supportive. So your veterinarian may recommend things like steam inhalation, you know, having your cat near the bathroom while the shower's running. Um, sometimes we will use nebulizers. It can also really help to support their appetite by feeding them stinky foods. Often this means canned food just to help them stay hydrated and because we can warm up the food and make it smell more, this can help to spark the appetite of the cat. Cats really do rely on their sense of smell with whether or not they like a food or will eat a food and so make Making that food as appealing to them as possible can help to support their appetite if they're feeling a bit unwell. It's also important to gently be cleaning discharge from their eyes and nose using a warm clean cloth to very gently kind of soak and clear away discharge a few times a day. Now if the cat is a little bit more severely affected, some cats will need feeding tubes placed to support them while they're recovering. Some cats require hospitalization for IV fluids to keep them hydrated and to get medications into them. Some cats will also need medication for nausea or to stimulate their appetite and some cats may benefit from pain management and an anti-inflammatory to help reduce the inflammation that's happening in their upper respiratory tract. Sometimes antivirals will also be used like femcyclovir. Now something that I did want to specifically cover is lysine. For a while, using lysine for feline URIs was incredibly common and the vast majority of veterinarians were recommending it. However, now we have a bunch more research into how effective lysine is and the preponderance of the research does not support the use of lysine. It doesn't have enough of an effect to reduce viral load. It did not reduce the length of the illness nor the severity of symptoms and so using lysine is no longer a recommended treatment. And as I've said before on this channel, we are all about an ounce of prevention. And so you also need to know what you can do to prevent feline URIs. The most important thing truly is vaccination. Our vaccines do help dramatically to reduce the severity of illness and to protect cats from getting URIs. So make sure to keep up with vaccines for your cat and it can also be incredibly helpful to reduce stress however is possible for our cats. I will link a video where I talk about feline enrichment and husbandry. I go over how important vertical space is to help cats feel safe and how cats really are quite schedule oriented. So having a predictable schedule, including predictable playtime, and frequent access to small meals can be very helpful for our cats. Also having enough resources, that means enough litter box locations, water sources, food puzzles, etc. All of those things are very important for cat quality of life and will reduce stress, which will reduce upper respiratory infection severity and flare up likelihood. It really does help me out a lot if you can like this video, if you've learned something today that shows me if I'm covering these sorts of topics in the right amount of depth that is most helpful for you. And please do comment something that you've learned today, something that you'll change or something that you'd like me to cover in the future. I would love to hear from you. I do post a new video most Fridays, so we will see you next week. Bye!